Today on 10 Minute IT Jams, we're joined by Charles Carmichael, who is the Chief Technology Officer at Mandiant Consulting. Mandiant is recognized by enterprises, governments, and law enforcement agencies worldwide as the market leader in threat intelligence and expertise gained on the front lines of cybersecurity. Charles joins us today to tell us more about Mandiant and how they're helping businesses in the APAC region. Thank you for coming along, Charles, and welcome to the jam. Hey, thanks so much. Good to be here. Thank you very much. Well, let's get straight into it. Could you please remind our audience who Mandiant is and what the company does in the world of cybersecurity? Yeah, so Mandiant is a cybersecurity organization that was founded about 20 years ago based on the premise that breaches are inevitable. And what we wanted to do is help organizations both respond to security events, but also prepare for and mitigate the risk and the impact of those events. And what we've learned over the years is that threat actors operate in very similar ways. Um, they follow a similar methodology. And so it's easier for us to help companies defend organi- uh, defend against the threats based on what we've learned from responding to intrusions. Well, now, what is currently keeping the average CSO awake at night? Yeah, you know, probably the number one cybersecurity threat to any CSO across the globe is the threat of multifaceted extortion. And essentially what that is, it's a, it's a combination of ransomware, it's a combination of data theft, it's a combination of extortion. And, and really what we find are that you know, threat actors today that are financially motivated, now gone are the days where they steal credit card numbers and try to sell that on the dark web. Because it takes a lot of time to steal enough credit card numbers to be able to make a million dollars. But what they realize is that they can conduct an intrusion operation in a few days and extort a company for a few million dollars there's a pretty good chance that they're going to end up getting paid. And because of that, that's really what most threat actors are doing nowadays. They're creating a lot of disruption to companies. They're creating a lot of pressure in a lot of different ways by encrypting data, by threatening to release information um, publicly, by personally uh, uh, extorting uh, employees or family members of organizations. And and they're trying to find a way um, to, to get paid a large extortion demand. And that's really what's keeping most CSOs um, awake at night. Well, now we saw from a mandate report earlier that dwell times for cyber criminals are down across the world. Does yeah. this mean we're slowly getting on top of threats? Yeah, look, I, I think it means a few things. Number one, I'll, I'll start by saying that, you know, there is a larger volume of intrusions where the threat actors are announcing their presence in the environment by way of writing encryptors across an environment and leaving an extortion note. So they're 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 telling the victim organization that they're there, and they're conducting their intrusions in a much quicker pace. Um, you know, gone are the days where uh, you know a threat actor may be stealing data from an environment for for many many months, where they would steal credit card data specifically where they're financially motivated. Uh, they want to conduct as much. Uh, disruption as they possibly can to pressure the company into paying an extortion demand. So they're very loud, they're very noisy, um, and they make themselves uh, aware you know, very quickly. But on the flip side, certainly companies are getting better at cybersecurity. They're buying new technologies, they're hiring new people, they're building new processes. So, so they definitely are getting a lot better at security. There's no question about that. And that's definitely contributing to some of the shorter dwell time. But you know, I'll tell you, you know, it's interesting to see the caseload. You know, it, it takes on average a few weeks for organizations to learn that there is a security event, generally, again, skewed by the fact that a lot of threat actors are announcing that they're there. Years ago, when we first started tracking this statistic, uh, sometimes we'd see threat actors in environments for over a year or even sometimes several years. And the 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 dwell time in the Asia Pacific region and Australia, New Zealand region tended to be quite higher than it was in the Western world for, for a variety of reasons. But um, but I think people are getting better and, um, and and threat actors are also announcing themselves earlier. Well, now, who are the main threat actors we're seeing in the APEC region and what are their motivations, generally speaking? Yeah, so there's really two categories of threat actors that we see um, the most common in the uh, APEC region. The the first is the group that I talked about, the folks that are conducting multifaceted extortion. They are typically folks operating out of Eastern Europe that are financially motivated, that will create disruption to get paid. Uh, The second category are espionage operators that are breaking into organizations to steal information 
not necessarily to sell it, but to use it for either political, economic, or military advantage. And so those are the intrusions that tend to be much more quiet. They tend to last a lot longer. Um, we see intrusion activity that you know, sometimes lasts you know, for years, um, sometimes many, many years, uh, because um, you know, those actors don't want to be caught. They want to continue to take information in a prolonged period of time. In certain countries, we see certain threat actors conducting longer scale intrusions against. Um, but um, you know, it's, I think it's the espionage operators that are having some substantial impact here in Australia, but not really talked about uh, very openly. Well, now, what is on the near horizon for Mandian? Are there any projects your development teams are uh, focused on currently? Yeah, so look, we've we've got a tremendous amount of consulting, you know, caseload right now for organizations that are responding to breaches. We're helping a lot of organizations, you know, continue to build their cybersecurity defenses, and so there's a lot of time that we're spending on that right now. But one thing that's uh, you know also keeping us um, you know occupied is was working through the the Google Cloud integration uh, of Mandiant, and so we're trying to um, uh, collaborate with the Google Cloud and the broader Alphabet organization as much as we can to share threat intelligence, to, to share a lot of frontline learnings about what we're seeing from a threat perspective, what we're seeing clients asking for, and so we're working on a lot of uh, you know improvements and integrations to the Google Chronicle product and a, a variety of other security products that that we've got out there. Well, I guess one more question to finish off. For audience members who want to get in, find out more about Mandiant and get in touch, what's the best way for them to do that? Yeah, you look, there's a lot of uh, different resources that we have available. What, what I recommend folks do is just go to the Mandiant blog page. We got a lot of research that we put out there, whether it's uh, you know threat research that we're, we're learning about based on you know, intrusions that we're investigating, or just the way that we are using you know, AI to help us better defend the networks. You know, we, we've got a great blog out there that describes how Mandiant consultants are using AI, you know, BAR, ChatGPT, and a variety of other you know, technologies to help us streamline what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, it has been a pleasure having you on the Jam, Charles, and learning more about Mandiant and what you guys do. Uh, we look forward to hearing more from Mandiant very soon. Awesome. Thanks so much, Tom.